Hey, this is Presh Tolwalker. The Manchester Evening News reports the impossible question on GCSE exam that had 16-year-olds across the country stumped. I'm going to present a version of the question and show one way to solve the problem. Circles A, B, and C are in a row such that ABC is a straight line segment. Circles A and C pass through the center of circle B, and circle B passes through the centers of circles A and C. Circle B intersects circle A at the points D and E, and circle B intersects the circle C at the points F and G. Consider two different regions. One region is bounded by the arcs BD, DF, and FB, and the other region is bounded by the arcs BE, EG, and GB. If each circle has a radius equal to 4, work out the total area of the two shaded regions. Give your answer in terms of pi. I thank Joe for the suggestion. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. Before we work out the answer, I want to suggest a strategy that you can use to solve all types of problems like this. First, connect each circle center to the other circle centers, intersection points, points of tangency, and other special points in the problem. A second strategy is to break down areas into circular sectors and polygons. If you apply these strategies, you'll be able to solve nearly every single type of problem like this. So let's apply the strategy to our problem. We'll connect the centers A and B, and then connect the centers B and C. Each circle has a radius equal to 4, so AB is equal to 4 and BC is equal to 4. Now let's construct AD and AE, then we'll construct BD and BE, then we'll construct BF and BG, and finally we'll construct CF and CG. We now can break down the areas into the following shapes. ADB is an equilateral triangle because each side is a radius of either A or B, or both, and each side has a length equal to 4. So ADB is an equilateral triangle. We also have equilateral triangles BFC, AEB, and BGC. In between the equilateral triangles and the remaining arcs in circle B, we have the following circular segments. There are eight in total. We'll now solve the problem in the following way. Let's focus just on circle B. The area of circle B is equal to two times the area of a single blue region, plus four times the area of an equilateral triangle, plus eight times the area of a circular segment. If we can calculate everything except the two blue areas, then we'll be able to solve for the blue areas in terms of the other areas. So let's calculate the area of a circular segment. This is equal to the area of a circular sector minus the area of the equilateral triangle. Now the area of a circular sector is equal to pi r squared multiplied by theta degrees over 360 degrees. Here r is equal to 4 and theta is equal to 60 degrees because the circular sector is one of the angles of the equilateral triangle. So we substitute in and then simplify to get the area of the circular sector is equal to 16 pi over 6. Then the equilateral triangle's area is equal to s squared multiplied by the square root of 3 all over 4. Each side length is equal to 4, so we substitute in and then simplify to get the area of the equilateral triangle is 4 times the square root of 3. Let's just put that over here by the area of the equilateral triangle as well. We'll now simplify this to get the area of the circular segment. It's equal to 16 pi over 6 minus 4 times the square root of 3. So we'll substitute in. 
we finally calculate the area of circle B. This is equal to pi r squared, which is equal to 16 pi. Now we want to calculate two of these blue regions, and let's just label that as x. So we now have an equation. 16 pi is equal to x plus 4 multiplied by 4 times the square root of 3 plus 8 multiplied by the area of a circular segment, where each segment is equal to 16 pi over 6 minus 4 times the square root of 3. All that remains is to simplify this equation and solve for x. So we'll just simplify this equation and we'll group terms that have a square root of 3 and we'll group terms that have a pi together. So we get 0 is equal to x minus 16 times the square root of 3 plus 32 pi over 6. We then solve for x to get that x is equal to 16 times the square root of 3 minus 16 pi over 3 and that's approximately equal to 10.958. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time. <laughs>